What's good, everybody? It's your boy, Mr. Daniel Banks, CA, DJ Fine, CEO, JTU. We are Jersey Magazine and Jersey Diamonds, and I'm here with Miss Ashley Gillette. Yes. That's Sarah? Sorry. Yes. <laughs> yes. I said it right. I was practicing all day. Um, Ms. Gillette is an author of a book called Red Flags Run, um, The Warning Signs in Relationships, and we're going to talk a little bit about that. So first, tell me a little bit about yourself, and then we'll get into the book. All right. So my name is Ashley, as he stated. Um, I'm an author. By day, I do mortgages by night. I am a relationship consultant, and um, I also have a podcast called The Love Rehab, where I interview uh, bloggers, uh, celebrities, influencers for, with their red flags on stories. So that's basically what I got going on right now. So, so you say you're a mortgager by day? Yes, I've been in the mortgage industry for a few years, um, getting people into homes, their first homes, and okay. refinances and stuff like so that. Yeah, so that and everything. I've been doing that for about eight years. Okay. And yeah, my sister's an underwriter, so I kind of like under her wing yeah. and started with processing and pre-underwriting. And I also do weddings, too. I do a lot. Yeah, she does a lot. <laughs> Multi-talented, you already know how we do it here. Exactly. All right, so let's get into the author part. What made you first become, want to start writing and be so consistent to now as a part of your lifestyle? Well, I, honestly, I started when I was in high school, and um, I was writing a book about church. Crazy. About, <laughs> about <laughs> the stuff that I saw uh, and, you know, the, the, the bad stuff that I, that I was dealing with and going through. Mm. So I started writing about that, and then it kind of fell to the side. And then when I started dating and having all these bad experiences, and I would call my sister and tell my aunt, like, "Girl, you don't know what he just did." They were like, "Yo, you gotta, you yeah, gotta right, put, right, a, right. you gotta put this in the book." Yeah. So it just that's what happened. So how so how did this take a turn? Did you ever go to school for like for writing or like you know like some people go for journalism, writing? You just nope. Right off. I was road. actually in college for more education. Okay. And then when I went to deal with the kids in public schools in Brooklyn, I changed my mind. <laughs> so that's why I'm in the mortgage industry. But no, I didn't go to school for journalism or anything like that. I'm actually going back to school uh, for psychology because I am um, uh, consulting people in their bad relationships and stuff like that. Oh, so you now you're just moving all to the field of yeah. relationships and consulting. That's good. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now let's get into the book, Red Flags Run. How did you come up with this title? Um, it was kind of organic. It was, you know, I just kept getting signs about the word red flags, like, oh my God, that's a red flag, it's a red flag. And then it was just so simple. The warning signs of relationship, that was kind of the editors who chose that. But I was like, when you see red flags, run. Yeah. So that's how that came about. And that's the symbolism also, of course, the red flags are on the book. Yes. And everything like that, okay? Yes. Okay. Now, obviously, there's a lot of uh, different topics and relationships. Now, are these based off of yourself or are these based off of other people? These are all the stories of things that I went through. And okay. I have it broken down with relationships and dating, so everything is about me. And how many chapters are there? I would say about 10. I would say, right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I sometimes forget. So she put 10 people on blast, is basically what she's saying. <laughs> but I changed their names. Okay. I changed their names, so. So tell, me, so tell me some of the uniqueness about some of the titles of the chapters that you have in your book. So we have it broken down. Um, we have Baby Boy. He was a dude that I was dating that was like underneath his mother, like just doing a lot of stuff. And then we have Deranged because he was crazy as hell. Okay. Like it just, the names was perfect. And then we have The Liar because he lied about everything. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of broken down like that to describe their character and how our relationship was. Yeah. It's crazy. I should 10 people on blast, yo. I mean, I changed the names, <laughs> I said. I changed the names, so we're all good. So what was one of the most challenging, I guess, stories that you came up with um, or actually put into your book? Like, which, which chapter? I would say deranged. Deranged, for okay. sure. Let's talk about that. What, what made that chapter a little bit more challenging than some of the other ones? Because, okay, so we were together for about five months, and that was probably the worst relationship I've ever had in my life. And just me even writing it and replaying what I went through with him in those small five months, it, it just made me disgusted with the stuff that I went through, the stuff that I dealt with. And it's crazy because everything is not in the book. The editors mm -hmm. couldn't put everything in the book. Yeah. I'm going to have an uncut version yeah. eventually. But um, it was just like the threat. He used to threaten my life. He would stalk me, send people to my house, mm -hmm. uh, call my phone, leave threatening messages on my phone, leave notes on my car. Like I had to like park so he knew where my house was i had to park different places like call my job it was just bad it was like really bad i changed my number 
walking up to my car, he would notice me on the street and he would walk up to my car and try to open the door. Oof. I had to get a restraining order. It was really bad. Oof. It was bad. Like that is one man. I can see everybody in this book, but him, I don't ever want to see that man. Ever. That's a deranged man. Yes, that's what chapter, deranged. What chapter is that? That is chapter number two. Chapter two. So it's right, we just right into it. <laughs> deranged, yes. Chapter number two. Which one's on chapter one? What's the title called chapter one? Um, Big Boy. Big Boy. And what made you choose that first? Because he, oh, no, it, there was no particular order. Okay. So we did relationships and then we did dating. There, it wasn't really an issue with the order. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I like that. I like that. So what was one of the most joyful chapters that's like something that you just kind of joyful in the sense of like you reflecting this probably made you laugh more than i would say mute he's the last okay. chapter <laughs> okay he's the last chapter tell me about that a little bit so mr mute um i met him the day my sister met her husband at a wedding and when i tell you um he dragged out for a whole year trying to go on the first date with me and that never happened mm. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. Like, they already engaged and you still trying to go on a date. Like, he would be consistent and then he'll fall off the fall off, fall off the bandwagon. But he did. One day we went out to dinner with a lot of people. It wasn't a date. And he mentioned something about my weight because I was a little heavier. And he said, oh, you could stand to uh, drop some more pounds. You, you can go to, like, 135. So I was like, oh, okay. I, I didn't say anything. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, and I started to see a nutritionist. And I said, okay. And then I noticed that he would watch me on Facebook and I started to take my weight loss serious. And I was seeing a nutritionist and working out. And that's when he would come around. But it, it, was, it, was, just, it was just ridiculous. It was, he would call and I would tell my sister because she, he had a great job. He had a house, mm. two cars. She was like, you always going for these bad men. Them, you need to talk to him. So I tried to make it work because yeah. of the bad experiences I had, but I realized why he was 43 and single still. Like, he just don't talk, he don't say nothing. I would tell my sister, I'm telling you, he don't talk, and then she called. We were on the phone, and he called. I said, I'm gonna merge the call, and I'm gonna let you see. And we merged the call, and he said nothing. Like, he's just hand breathing. Just breathing. Just I was like, I was really trying to push him to say something. I was like, oh, how's the weather? Like, what's the weather like? Oh, I'm not a meteorologist. <laughs> and then he would just stop talking. And then I'm like, okay. So, yeah. you on your way to work? Yeah. He said, I know what you're trying to do. And I was like, oh, my God. I thought he knew my sister was on the phone. He said, you're trying to make me talk. I said, okay. Never mind. I'm sorry. Yeah. I was like, no, I'm good. Cool. So, reflecting in your book and, and looking at some of the pages, you actually have some text messages in the book from now, mute from, from mute yes specifically yes and and, the, and you have um parenthesized actually like one silence yes. five seconds like ten seconds like yes we i have i think a conversation that we had and then uh the text message because uh another few months went by i just you know i gave up i just stopped talking to him and then he just came out of nowhere and texted me and said um, I want I want a roommate or something like that. He said I want a I want a roommate. I said excuse me. I said I'm not moving with you. Right. He said oh so I'm a, you you want to get engaged? He's like I'll get you a better ring than your sister anyway. That's what y'all girls like, right? Jeez. I said what? Oh, so he got bold. Yes. Started talking. Yes. He started talking. <laughs> yeah. And then I kindly texted him. I said you know what? It's better that we just part ways. I'm good. It's not working out. We still haven't gone out. Like you tried, and then you you fall off the bandwagon. And then he didn't respond. And then he called me a few days later and got upset, like barked on me for no reason. Like mm. he was just angry. And then I didn't hear from him again since then. And he stayed mute. <laughs> yeah, he stayed mute, but he watches me every day though. She called him. <laughs> tell you. Okay. So now let's talk about some of the platforms you've been on. Now this book has clearly been getting exposure day to day. Mm -hmm. And how's that been feel? Like, how do you feel about that? Like just exposing that that side of you, that part of you, and now it's being seen everywhere. Yeah, it is. Um, you know, I, it came out last year. You know, it was just me pushing it. I really didn't, like, I sold, they, they told me the average author sells about 100 copies of the book, and I sold that the first day. And my yeah. book release, like, my book release was huge. Um, and I, I did Circle of Sisters with WBLS. I was with them. And I also went to Chicago and did um, something called World Changers. So that was just me pushing it. But then ever since I got with a team, you know they they pushed me into bigger platforms. So I've been I've spoken on relationship panels, youth empowerment shows, 
Um, I've gotten my book in the hands of some celebrities, uh, Tracy Braxton, Peter Guns, hey. Yandy, yeah. um, some other people, you know, just just some other people had a couple of radio shows. I was on Hot 97 a few weeks ago. I would say in July, I was on Hot 97. You know, just getting the word out there. I've done a couple of podcast interviews, both in the, over the phone, in person. Was there any training for this or was it just straight up? They do media beautiful. training, like literally right before. Or we'll do media training when I first started because I was trash. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I have no problem talking to you about mm. something on the side, but then I'm like, freeze up so definitely mm-hmm. have to do media training. But what about the relationship consultation? Like did did you go to training for that conversation no, or it's just kind of paid like based off of just what's gone on in your life based, and yeah. relating it to other situations. Yeah, it's based off of experience and like just listening to the people and just giving them the best advice possible or just guiding them. I can help people better than I can help myself. Yeah. Like literally. Mm-hmm. Like I had to talk to some girl my my own girls about they like girl they have to remind me. red flags like okay 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 just want to make sure well maybe you're just trying to write you know you're writing this no no no, no. <laughs> i don't need no more chapters i don't need no more chapters i actually got more but i don't need no more i don't need any additional chapters yeah. but um yeah it's like this this year has been great like next year is gonna be even better like, i'm not stopping awesome. until i get to ellen steve harvey i'm gonna yeah, i'm gonna yeah. be on those platforms next definitely year for sure definitely soon definitely with yes. the way you're going definitely Absolutely. So, so I want to back up a little bit. Okay. Now you told me you you you've grown up in the church. Yes. So tell me a little bit of the challenges, because not everybody knows these type of things, but the challenges you've gone through with being a pastor's daughter. Yes. And writing this type of a book. Yeah, this it was very hard for me to. Did your father read it? No, he's not allowed to read it. <laughs> Daddy is not allowed to read the book. Mm. My mom read it, but Daddy is not allowed to read the book. Um. Yeah, that we, we my sister and I we we made an agreement that Daddy cannot read this okay. book. But he actually made an announcement at the church. He said, "Listen, my daughter read this book. I know I know you guys know." He said, "I'm very proud of her. Don't ask me no questions about this book because I don't know what's in it and I'm not reading it." Mm-hmm. And I told him, and he had to shut it down because you know they kind of interesting. Yeah. So it was hard. I had to but muster up the courage to actually get this out there because I know people in the church are going to buy it just to be nosy and just, just to nosy. see what Pastor Daughter is really doing out there. But a lot of them have been very um, they've been very um, encouraging and I, I was actually shocked. They're like proud of you. Like wow you did it. Like you know. Some people tell me even still that never they didn't get the book from me. They ordered it off of Amazon. Mm. So they didn't tell me until after they read the book. I was like, oh, okay, heard you. So they didn't get it from me. They didn't get it from my website. Yeah. They didn't get it from my... They bring it to you so that they can have Some people did. Some yeah. people did. Some people just wanted to be nosy and know, wanted to know what Pastor Gillette's daughter was doing. Well... So, you know, but I was like, it's all right. That's more sales for me. Thank you. That's right. <laughs> that's right. So your first book signing, how did that... Like you said, you sold over 100 copies. Your yes. First oh, the first book signing was amazing. That was... I had a, a brand new a venue. I had a DJ. I had a chef there. Oh, what is that? Um, it's called a venue called Daily Press. Okay. It's a brand new spot. It's in Brooklyn, and I had a relationship panel that day. I had three guys talk. That I wanted to do a little twist. I didn't yeah, want the people to come to sign a book. So I had three guys, three girls, and my sister hosted a relationship mm. panel while I was signing books because it was like the line. Mm. And people, this guy came and bought three books for his sister. It was like, people was coming off the street because it was yeah. a big storefront. And I had like signs everywhere and I had like three photographers. It was really good. I was so shocked about the, the amount of people that came to support. Um, it was a really nice event, but the relationship panel was like, topped it off. That was like the best thing ever to discuss some scenarios in the book and just ask them questions and their feedback and not only just get women's perspective, but get the men's perspective. Awesome, awesome. Mm-hmm. So now just tell me about um, what's coming next and what's the next piece of uh, Red Flags Run? Well, the next set is next year, 2019, Red Flags Run 2 will be coming out. Um, I'm re- using my friends' experiences where they talk about their Red flag story. So I'm, I'm going to use my sister and a couple other friends um, to let you know, I'm not the only one who goes to this stuff. It's a lot of people, and also gonna do a talk about a friendship because there's a red flag of friendships. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of friends that you might keep around who are who are secretly jealous of you, who do spiteful things, and you don't have to stick in that friendship and friend family too. Because I had to drop a lot of family members, a lot of them, and a lot I lost a lot of friends when this book came out. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you just tell, tell them how it is. Yeah. It, it's, it's, it's crazy, but yeah, I'm definitely going to talk about the friendship and use my friends' stories and then eventually spin off to men having their say mm -hmm. for another um, of another Red Flags Run book. And I also do my podcast, like I said before, where, um, you know, we get together in the studio and just do the same thing we're doing here. Just chop awesome. it up, talk about their red flags run experiences. Oh, I, got some, I got some red flags run experiences. Yeah, you probably going to come, come on and talk <laughs> about those situations. I know yeah, you got something. Talk about a little something. So. Just a little bit. <laughs> yeah, they're here for us, man. We are Jersey Magazine. Actually, tell them they can book you. Get, to, get, get your book, buy it, everything. Okay, so we have Amazon. You hit Red Flags Run. It will come through. You have my website, www.redflagsrun.com. I actually post blogs every Thursday or every other Thursday where I talk about different topics with green flags, uh, celebrity um, stories and all that kind where you can just come read it. And um, you can find me on Instagram, Ashley W. Gillette or Red Flags Run. And that's about it. It first. We are just a magazine. Jersey turned out entertainment. Entertainment.